all know Tetris right? There are single-celled organisms living under rocks on the surface of Mars that know what Tetris is. Hell, even my nan has played Tetris, that's just how culturally significant it is. There's not much that I can tell you about the original Tetris and its various ports that most of you won't already know. YouTube and the internet at large is chock full of that kind of trivia. Perhaps instead I can tell you something about its sequel. Yes, there is a sequel to Tetris, I hear some of you say. While Tetris has seen countless ports, iterations and updates since its original release, there are two games I consider legit OG sequels. Let's take a look at the first one. The original version of Tetris, which made its way onto various computer platforms in the 1980s, was developed by a Russian gentleman by the name of Alexei Pajitnov. Pajitnov was working for the Soviet Academy of Sciences at the time, and given the communist government and political atmosphere, what was Alexei's was now theirs. So he received no royalties for the first game. However, this did not temper his desire to create puzzle games, because in 1989, he developed a successor to Tetris, which he named Weltris. Released for DOS, Amiga and classic Mac OS, Weltris was published in the West by Spectrum Holobyte in 1989. Available in glorious CGA and EGA graphics modes, the first challenge is to actually begin playing the bloody thing. At startup, you'll be asked some trivia about the Soviet Union and directed to check the game's manual on a specific page to find it. You know, just in case you don't know the area of Latvia or in square miles off by heart. This is a relic of the way game developers handled DRM back in the 80s and 90s. Pirating software back then was as easy as copying the contents of a floppy disk onto a blank one for your mates, so developers often required you to answer a question or enter a code at startup, the location of which was either in the manual, on the box, or solvable only by doing some fucking Caesar squares or some shit. Once you've told the game everything about your favourite Soviet flag, we're on our way. From the start menu, select your difficulty, and we begin. The flat game field which we knew and loved has been changed into a 3D-esque pseudo-well, with four walls that the pieces fall down, leading to the bottom where the pieces fall until they hit something. On the right is some lovely pixel art of everyday life in the Soviet Union. Are you alright there, love? Do you need me to call someone for you? Filling a line removes those pieces, creating more space. Depending on which wall the piece arrives at the bottom from will determine the gravity. For example, a piece falling down the right hand wall will continue left as it reaches the bottom until it hits something. If a piece is unable to rest solidly within the bottom of the well, with some or all of it staying in the wall, that wall becomes an angry red colour preventing the player from dropping pieces from that wall for several turns. If all four walls turn red, it's game over boys. The pieces you receive and the speed with which they fall is determined by the initial level difficulty. As the difficulty increases, you'll notice that we're not just dealing with three and four block pieces, we're also getting five block pieces chucked at us. Jesus, I thought this was Tetris, not Pentris. Anyway, I like this game. There's a decent bit of strategy involved in getting good, and all your previous Tetris knowledge and skill goes out the window. One little tidbit which took me a while to pick up and use is that the corners in Weltris's game area allow for some weird shenanigans. If you position a piece in the corner so it is partially in two different walls, that piece's shape changes and it sort of folds into itself. When it reaches the bottom of the well, the two halves then travel in different directions. Very fancy indeed. Let's switch gears quickly and take a look at the other Tetris sequel before we get sent to the Gulag. It's portable, it's in stereo, and its games are interchangeable. Plus, Game Boy comes with the outrageous new game, Tetris. And for Despite head not being the original version, the Game Boy port of Tetris, which was included with the handheld in 1989, is what I would consider the quintessential Tetris experience. This is the genesis of where all our basic Tetris expectations come from. The music, the shape, the layout, the game modes, everyone I know personally got their Tetris start here. So it should come as no surprise that a follow-up called Tetris 2 is often considered the first sequel for many people. 
developed by Elog, the same people that made the original Tetris for Game Boy, Tetris 2 was released on the NES, Super Nintendo and the Game Boy in 1993 and rather than build on the original, you know, change the music, throw up some new curtains and call it a day, Tetris 2 changes the formula completely and gives us an entirely new challenge to puzzle over. You can see here I'm playing the SNES version, but as previously mentioned there were ports available for the NES and also the Game Boy, with the mechanics being exactly the same, just the difference in audio and graphical quality. Once in the game, rather than match Tetrominoes together with the aim of filling horizontal lines which then disappear for points, we instead match Tetrominoes based on their colour. Four or more blocks of a matching colour will make those blocks disappear. Blocks above, which aren't connected to any others, will then fall down hopefully making new matches and so on. Each board has several flashing blocks which must be matched with and removed for the level to finish. This reminds me more of Dr Mario than the original Tetris and a lot of the same strategy from that game applies here as well. I do like the fact that each level has an optimal solution, often solvable with less than 5 matches. The fun here is trying to figure out if you can finish the same board faster than you did before, because it's easy to get overwhelmed and before you know it, you're desperately trying to juggle pieces and clear some space before it's game over. But what about other gameplay options? Well, on the main menu for each port of Tetris 2 you'll find options for one player mode and versus mode. One player mode is what we've been playing so far, however versus mode gives us two other options. One player versus two player where you go head to head against a friend, racing to make the most matches and finish the board before your opponent. As the opposing player makes matches, the ceiling of your board will get lower, increasing the difficulty. The Game Boy version of two player mode requires a friend with a Game Boy and a copy of the game, as well as the obligatory link cable. Despite having the game myself as a 7 year old Connor, I lacked friends, second Game Boys and link cables, so no two player for me. There's also one player versus com. Presumably this is short for the computer and not a member of the College of Osteopathic Medicine, where the computer takes the place of your non-existent friend. Versus Com is hard. I gave this mode a go and got my arse handed to me every single time. I tried setting the difficulty to easy and still found myself drowning in blocks. Please feel free to comment down below and tell me how much of a noob I am. Overall, I enjoyed Tetris 2 and if I had to pick between it and Weltris, I would probably pick Tetris 2. So, which one is the true sequel to Tetris? Most people got their start with the Game Boy version. So a follow up on the same platform called Tetris 2 would have most people saying it's got to be the Nintendo offering. However when the original developer of Tetris comes out with what he considers the spiritual successor, surely it's Weltris? I don't think it matters either way, for me the question comes down to which was more enjoyable and I have to give it to Tetris 2. Not only was it easier to get hold of today, but the different boards, each of which require a different solution to solve instead of an endless mode where you can't win, you just try not to lose for as long as you can, makes Tetris 2 a more compelling puzzle offering in my opinion. But what about you? Did you play Weltris or Tetris 2 back in the day? Which one is the true sequel to Tetris? Let me know down in the comments and we will finally figure this one out. Thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, do consider subscribing and I will see you on the next one. Bye.